wait for this to do its thing hello my lovelies oh my gosh i've had a long day can you tell um <laughs> uh, hi everybody thank you for coming to my wednesday zap chat because every energy is everything um tonight well first of all when you get here tell me if you can see me if you can hear me everything should be good to go and there might be a delay and all that, but you know, that's that. Um, tonight we're talking about cleanses and detoxes, what they are and what the benefits are. Um, and I'll be inviting you to kind of watch me as I go on a month long, um, cilantro juice cleanse, um, that I'm going to be starting this weekend. But, um, before we go there, um, once again, I just want to say hello. If you are watching live, please drop hashtag live in the chat. If you are watching this on the replay, please say team replay or hashtag replay, whatever. Um, <laughs> so that I can know that you're watching because I love knowing that. Um, so let's see. Gosh, to get started in this, I really kind of need to tell you my health journey so far. So, um, I'm kind of in the mid middle of, um, one of my health journeys and it started back in 2012 ish. <laughs> um, actually long before that. So full history. Um, I grew up always kind of struggling with my weight and, um, back in the early nineties, I kind of just went from a very healthy, you know, size 10, 12, had a little bit of booty. Ha, Kesai, you're here, yay. I'm just getting into my story about, um, about where I've been with my health journey, um, and the part that detoxes and cleanses have, uh, played a part in them, in it. <laughs> um, so yeah, back in 2012, I was in a very unhappy marriage and, um, Oh yeah, I was backtracking before that. So anyway, I found out uh, just before I got married in 2005, uh, actually in 2004, I found out that I was apparently born with only half of a thyroid gland, which explained a lot about my uh, struggle with weight loss and gain and weight loss and gain and weight loss and gain, the whole like, you know, uh, roller coaster -y thing, right? Um, and so of course they did all the checks to see if I had cancer because I had a huge goiter at the time on the one half that I did have. Um, and it, I could tell energetically then that it was really tied to something emotional. There was like some very strong emotional trauma and I'm guessing I still haven't really, uh, worked on it, but that's going to be one thing that I'm going to be working on. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm guessing it was actually a, um, possibly a trauma that occurred while I was in the womb or related to my mother. That's what I'm, th that's what I get so far, but I haven't healed that part yet. I'm working on that. Um, it's part of my journey of the future. <laughs> so, um, I got married. I moved to Norway. Um, I had a lot of gallstone problems because I guess me and the food in Norway didn't get along and then we moved back to the United States and my gallstone problems went away um but I got this big goiter on the one half of my thyroid that I did still have now this was at a point in my life when I had not yet studied nutritional um anything um I had known a lot of spiritual things, spiritual healing, energy healing, and all that kind of stuff. But I'll be honest, I didn't have a lot of faith in its ability to heal something that was 
this, you know, this is this giant thing on the side of my throat. So I ended up going the surgical route and I had what I had left of my thyroid completely removed, making me completely dependent on, um, prescription medication for the rest of my life so that I can replace thyroid, um, you know, my T3, T4 and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I went along for a while, but after the removal of the gland, I exploded, <laughs> like literally gained over a hundred pounds in less than a year. Um, which is scary, right? And then I continued to gain weight and this was putting a strain on my marriage. This was putting a strain on, you know, I had a, a new baby in 2008. Um, I wasn't able to do the things that I wanted to do with this young little beautiful child and all that kind of stuff. And at my height, I had stopped weighing myself, but the last time I had weighed myself, I was 420 pounds. So I knew I had to do something and I've got some pictures that I can share too, um, which are super unflattering, but they'll, they'll, they'll show you, you know, the proof in the pudding, so to speak. Um, so I knew I had to do something and I knew that I also wanted to change my career and so I went to Institute for Integrative Nutrition and I got my, um, my certificate in health coaching and I did my full year with them, um, studying all those dietary theories and the emotional stuff, the relationship stuff, all, I mean, they're a really actually a very good, um, very good company to learn from. They, they, they do a very high quality, um, training. So I got done with that and I knew that my first client had to be me. Um, at the time I had been hearing about this Australian guy who, um, took a tour around the United States drinking nothing but juice for, I think he ended up actually doing it for like two months or something, but, um, it's from the documentary fat, sick, and nearly dead. And if you ever get a chance to watch it, it's actually pretty fascinating. And it's a really good story. Now he has, um, joined the reboot.com in which he does guided reboots and stuff like that. And, um, but they're not like the way he did it. He did it just straight up juice and no solid foods or anything. Um, and he was on all kinds of medication and all this kind of stuff. So obviously you don't want to do this without your doctor knowing you don't want to do any kind of, um, detox or cleanse or any kind of drastic change in your, um, eating habits that could affect either whether you're on medications, whether you have a preexisting condition. Um, even if you don't know, you should always just talk to your health healthcare provider just to say, Hey, uh, you know, I got brain fog or I'm really tired all the time. So I'm thinking about doing this cleanse and you can talk about them, talk about it with them and, um, they'll give you their, you know, educated opinion on it. Um, uh, a lot of Western doctors are not a fan, <laughs> you know, of, of, uh, juice cleanses and stuff like that. But at least you'll know that if there's a chance that it can interfere with any of your, um, current health issues or conditions. So having said that, what I did is I went full out and I just did 30 days of nothing but green juice. And I'm a very simple person. Um, I had one recipe and I was sticking to it. <laughs> I wasn't going to do like all the different fruit juices and stuff like that because I know that sugar affects me. Um, I wasn't diagnosed with diabetes at the time, but I knew that sugar was affecting me. Um, so I just stuck with, stuck with, um, like the mean green Kasai, have you heard of, you know, of the mean green, um, recipe? It's like kale, uh, spinach. Oh my God. My brain's been so long. Uh, kale, spinach, cucumber, 
cucumber, celery, lemon, and ginger, and green apples, I think. That's what I did anyway. And it actually tastes really good. So at the time I was 420 plus pounds and, um, you never tried it? Hey, Bree, Bree's here too. Huzzah. <laughs> um, do you? Okay, cool. Yeah. It's, it's a really, it's a good one. I like it. Um, even my daughter drinks it. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I did that and I am not going to lie. The first four days, three and a half, four days, I was like, this is it. This is how I die. Like literally I felt terrible. I was pooping all the time. <laughs> um, I had big time lethargy and exhaustion. I had headaches and all this stuff. And you have to realize, and I was expecting some reaction because I was forewarned about, um, some side effects when you're first starting a cleanse. Um, because especially if you are addicted to coffee, sugar, um, really anything, um, your body is going to react to that lack of the thing. So I was having sugar withdrawals. I was having caffeine withdrawals, you know, it, the gamut. It was, I felt terrible, but I will tell you this. I woke up on the fifth day and I'm like, I'm going to go for a run today at 400 and something pounds. <laughs> well, I didn't actually, I might've jogged a little, <laughs> but I, I definitely, I went out and I walked and I felt amazing. And for the next three weeks, I felt incredible. And in those 30 days, I shed 46 pounds. And okay, this is the part that I found kind of humorous, but okay. You're not eating any solid food during this, this particular cleanse that I did. I was still having solid poop at like three weeks in. <laughs> okay. I know this is like, a, you know, who wants to talk about poop, but <laughs> when, when it comes to your health, poop is essential, right? Um, so the fact is, is that I, I've done the research since then. And the fact is, is that most of us are carrying around anywhere from five to 15 pounds of fecal matter in our intestines and colon at any given time. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Five to 15 pounds of poop. So when you say someone's full of shit, you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty impressive, I think. Um, and of course, as you detox, you're actually squeezing all this stuff out of your glands, out of your liver, out of your kidneys, out of your, your skin, ev everywhere. You know, the detox allows your body to do what it's meant to do. So that'll bring us to kind of, um, the reason <laughs> full of shit. Yes. <laughs> um, so that brings us to the reason for doing, you want to do this so bad? I know, right? Well, we're doing it starting Saturday. Um, so the reason for doing a cleanse is so there are teachers from when I was at IIN that were saying things like, um, if we lived in a pristine environment and we ate nothing but clean food and had nothing but clean water and had nothing but, uh, nurturing relationships, etc., we could live if not forever for hundreds of years. And the reason for that is our bodies are this amazing regenerative miracle of creation and our bodies are constantly seeking homeostasis homeostasis just means perfect balance right 
So in this really stressed out world, especially the last like decade that we've had, I'm not even talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about, you know, all the stress in America from, I won't get into politics because that won't be pretty, but, <laughs> but, well, dang, I mean, my, uh, my shaman teacher even said back, um, after 9-11 happened, our country had a communal soul loss, right? And when you are operating in an energetic space where you don't have a vital part of who you are to help guide, protect, and, you know, nurture you, then you're even under more stress. And to put it further, humans didn't start out walking upright. So just to stand upright, we are activating our adrenal glands, right? Which is stress, it's cortisol, and all of that stuff gets pumped into our bodies just so that we can stand up. So we live in, in this very stressful world. We live in this amazingly beautiful world but it's full of stress. It's full of these crazy interactions with our other humans. It's full of, you know, just, I got to survive. And, you know, so many of us are in survival mode all of the time. So our bodies don't get a chance and we don't sleep enough. That's a big one. We don't sleep enough. Um, so our bodies don't get a chance to, uh, heal itself. And so when we're doing a cleanse, especially if you do one where you're not eating solid food, um, you're giving your body the rest it needs. So it's going to suck for some people. Some, some people, they don't have any kind of cleanse reaction or anything like that because maybe they were already eating clean or whatever. But, but sometimes when you start a cleanse, you are flushing these toxins out into your bloodstream so that it can be carried out into your pee or poo. And that sucks because we're, our body has been, um, holding on to those toxins, right? They, they cover them up with fat cells. They, they cover them up with inflammation in your body. They cover them up with, um, just all this other stuff that we don't need to have in our bodies. And so when we start giving our bodies the chance to relax and we get rid of the five to 15 pounds of poop in our system and allows room for more, then it starts releasing those toxins back into our body. And we're going to feel the effects of that. But then you start feeling the effects of that. Yes, we are. That is so true. Yes. Um, and feeling the effects of those toxins now being removed from your body. I'm, I'm going to, I'm here to tell you, I, I never in my life felt so energized, um, because of my thyroid issues. I had brain fog all of the time. And on day five of my previous cleanse, literally, I was like, what I can think, <laughs> You know, I, 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 I'm thinking clearly what's going on. This is so weird. <laughs> um, so since 2013, 2014, when I did my cleanse, um, a lot of life happened in that time. Um, I got separated from my husband. Um, you know, I had a lot of financial hardship at the time because, um, I had quit my job like two months before he left us and so that I could homeschool our daughter. And yeah, that, that sucked a lot. Um, <laughs> cause it was, you know, during the time when businesses were like, no, we're letting people go. We're not letting people come back, you know, and I'd been there for seven years, but a lot happened that kind of, I still continued to lose weight, but very, 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 very slowly. Cause fast forward here, we are in 2023 and I'm no longer 420 pounds, but I'm about 280 now. 
Thank you, Bree. Thank you. You are so strong too. Mwah. Um, so this journey is at another juncture for me because this is all my journey. I'm not talking about anybody else's journey. This is what I've experienced. Um, I went through a long period of time where I kept like jumping back up to like 365. That seemed to be like this weird magic number that my body wanted to stay at. And so that forced me to look back at my IAN training and um, how they talked about um, how our bodies or our minds have a uh, set point, right? It's some number, it seems arbitrary, but there is some kind of psychological reason for it. But this is the number that our bodies or our minds thinks that we are safe at. And so that's where we stay. And a lot of people, um, they get so upset because they hit this plateau and they, I can't lose any more than, than this and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and what it comes down to, um, it's a lot of different approaches, but one of the things you have to address is your psychological set point for your weight. Um, and it's interesting because when you start thinking about that, you're like, wow, I really do keep myself here. Interesting. <laughs> why am I doing that um yeah so it becomes yet another case of self-exploration yet another time for shadow work yet another time for deep healing um and just rewiring our brain um I think it's so awesome you guys um that science finally acknowledges the fact that our our brains are not stagnant and that our gray cells do regenerate and that we can create neural pathways on our own um, and that it's not just sorry your brain is what it is <laughs> we get to change it Water. um did you guys have any questions or comments for what i've said so far I have music in my head always. Oh, this hair. What's going on with the hair? I know there's a long delay. And I don't know why. I always have the... Water is my favorite drink. You know, I used to hate it. Oh, that's another thing that was so cool. Yay! <laughs> um, I'm glad you love this info. Um... This was something that was really cool. Okay, talking about cilantro. Okay, that's a gr this is a great segue. I didn't even think of it this way. But okay, before I took my green juice cleanse, I was one of those... Oh, hi, hubby! <laughs> I was one of those um, people who thought that cilantro tastes like soap. Yay, team life! Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, there's like... Team cilantro soap and team cilantro yum. You know, I don't know, but I was always on the on the side where cilantro to me tastes like soap. When I did my thirty day green juice um, reboot, it actually totally reset my palate. I didn't crave sweets as much. I mean, that's always kind of like a thing with me, but but I definitely didn't crave them as much. Um, and cilantro now tastes like what, right. It does have a weird taste at first, but now to me, cilantro is delicious and fresh and amazing. And any any time I taste salsa without it, I think I feel like something's missing. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a, amazingly yummy to me now. Um, I don't often like just go and grab a bunch and, you know, chew on it, but you know, <laughs> I like it in things <laughs> where I didn't used to like it in things. Um, so me and my beautiful goddesses, Kasai and Brie have decided to support each other in doing big cilantro. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have decided that we are, uh, 
going to do our own cleanse that was, um, uh, Kasai actually told us it's, it's one of a, a cleanse that she's done multiple times. And, um, as I usually do, I, I'm taking her recipe and I'm like running with it and doing my own thing. But, <laughs> um, but the core of it, I'm totally sticking to, and I'm really excited to do it. And your hubby can eat it like just, just like he's eating a thing of lettuce. That's, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, I, I haven't actually tried to do that. I might, I might try to do that now that we're going on this cleanse. That might be fun. See how I nom it. Um, but yeah, we're going to go on this cleanse and, um, I have decided that I want to document my progress because I have been at one of those plateau points with my weight. Like I've been stuck in the 280, 290 range for a gazillion years, it feels like. Um, so I'm going to be doing some tapping on my set point. I'm also going to be, um, you know, doing various meditations for myself. Um, but I welcome anyone in my, in my group to, um, to kind of peek in on my life while I'm doing this and see what the results are. I'm going to take some before and after pictures. I'm going to take my measurements, um, which I probably won't share. <laughs> um, I'll share the before pictures probably, but, um, yeah, I will. I'll share the before pictures, but yeah, I'm very curious to see how my body changes. Um, doing this. I'm really excited for it. Uh, I've known for quite some time that my liver could use some love and I, and this particular cleanse, uh, will be drinking a lot of, um, uh, dandelion root tea, which is really, really good for the liver. Um, so am I, Kasai. I am so excited to start it. I just, you know how I've been having that feeling like the old me is dead, but I haven't been birthed yet. I have a feeling that this is all a part of that amazing, you know, process of rebirthing kind of. So, um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And, um, I'm almost at the half hour mark. So do you guys have any questions or did you want me to talk about anything else? There's, I'm going to share my pictures of before, like, like maybe in the thread of this thing. Um, it'll blow you away. Although I think, I think I shared with Kasai and Bree already. Might've probably, maybe, I don't remember. Yay. I'm so excited too. <laughs> yeah and also I've been feeling like my hair even is not as excited as it should be in the world you know you're amazing I think so too I um yeah it's like not going to be an official like group thing but I think it would be kind of cool for everyone to see our results when we do it um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to do this. I'm, I am ready, ready to release. <laughs> um, cause that's what it's all about, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And you got those amazing gym pictures with your hot self already going on, girl. So add this to it and it's going to be like, what? Yeah, tell your hubby. You're appreciated. <laughs> um, you know, not, not in like back on a way, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think if I have anything else I wanted to say about it. <laughs> um, Yeah, that's professional. Let's just, <laughs> let's just do that on camera. Um, 
Awesome. Awesome. So we'll, we'll all document ours. Um, I, you, you know, if, if you guys are not going to share it with your groups, feel free to share it in mine. Um, or even if you are sharing it in your groups, feel free to share it in mine. <laughs> I, oh, that's dangerous, Bree, being me. <laughs> I'm too much of a dork. Um, so, can you share with us the great benefit? Oh, oh my lord. Okay, okay, okay. So, I did some research. And the ingredients that we're going to be using um, are kind of like the powerhouses. So... There is cilantro, there's parsley, there's ginger, there's garlic, there's turmeric, and limes. Um, I haven't researched the benefits of limes, though. I know there's a whole bunch of vitamin C in them, of course. But I know there's more, and I haven't researched those yet. Um, I am also going to add the digestive enzyme bromelain and chlorella to mine. One of the biggest reasons I'm adding chlorella is because... Okay, so... The number one benefit, like the absolute number one benefit of doing a cilantro cleanse is that it detoxes your body of heavy metals. Um, and adding chlorella to cilantro makes it like super binding. Um, and in fact, I have a list of the actual heavy metals that it removes. So it binds or chelates, that's another like fancy term for binding, um, to arsenic, cadmium, mercury, yes, mercury, arsenic, and lead. Yeah. And so once those properties are all bound together, they like stick together like like glue and then they go into your digestive tract and they are removed through your kidneys via urine so when you're doing a cilantro cleanse or any cleanse really you do want to take care of your kidneys making sure that you're paying attention to what your body says to you um really really important um because you know the kidneys get they get worked um but but the good thing about cilantro and parsley is they are super, super, super beneficial for the kidneys. <laughs> so you have kidney support while you're working the kidneys so back here. Um, so you have super support for them while you're working them, but you still want to be careful, especially if you have any history with kidney issues. Um, okay. So my list of benefits for cilantro, this is long guys. Okay. Listen. <laughs> Binding heavy metals, blood sugar regulation, so it's really good for supporting people with diabetes, like myself. Um, it has anti-cancer properties. I have to look up what they mean by that when they say anti-cancer properties, because I'm not really sure. Um, it improves the health of the skin. That's a given, because whenever you detox, you are, uh, you know, your skin is your biggest organ on your body, in your body, on around your body. <laughs> um, and so when you start giving the rest of your body a chance to breathe, your skin just starts glowing. Oh my God. When I did my green juice cleanse, I swear to God, I looked 10 years younger. It was a trip. It was a trip. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a, this, uh, cilantro is a very strong, pardon me, a very strong antioxidant. Uh, it's cardioprotective, so it supports your heart health. It has antifungal and antibacterial properties. Um, it's a natural inter internal deodorant. That's another thing. When I did my cleanse last time, um, I didn't have to use deodorant. And I smelled amazing. Like, I'd go, you know, <laughs> after running or something. And it was like, it was very neutral. Like, there wasn't any kind of, any kind of smell. It was just like, I'm good. And that might have something to do with the antibacterial and antifungal thing. Something to research. Um, it possesses anti-anxiety properties. This is something I just learned today. So again, I'm going to be researching more on that. But um, I'm thinking because it's also an anti-inflammatory that with it, it, with it supporting all these other networks, it just naturally relaxes the body and the mind because when the body is agitated, so is the mind, etc., etc. 
Um, it helps to dissolve cholesterol in your arteries, lowers your blood pressure, promotes healthy liver function, and it improves your oral health, and it cleanses the pineal gland, uh, which Kasai can probably tell us more about that because she has done this like a whole bunch of times. Um, so I'd be interested in, in learning what your experience with that is, Kasai. Um, and it improves brain fog, like I said with my other thing. And that's just for cilantro, yo. Okay, now let's get to parsley. <laughs> I love these things. Um, parsley helps prevent anemia because of its high level of vitamin C, which helps iron absorption in the body. So anytime you have high levels of vitamin C, that does help iron to be absorbed into your body. Um, therefore, hopefully preventing anemia. It improves kidney health, it soothes indigestion, boosts your immune system, helps prevent bladder infections. Oh, it takes you on a true spiritual journey. Oh, I love you. I want to hear more about that. I totally do. We should do a talk. Oh my God. Yes. We should do talks during our cleanse, like where we're like on a zoom or something where we can be all together. Let's do that. I want to do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, parsley reduces gas and constipation and, um, yes, <laughs> uh, it helps with your, oh yeah, this was interesting. It helps with night blindness, which is so cool. We most definitely can. Yes, we can. Uh, it's an anti-inflammatory, natural diuretic, blood purifier. Um, it helps with oral health and bad breath. There's, you know, like every restaurant in the, in the world puts parsley as a garnish. Well, not every, but you know, it's common to put parsley as a garnish. There's not, there's more than one reason for that. It's not just pretty. If you chew on it after your meal, your breath won't stink. Just saying. I've, I've been doing that for years. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. It, it also supports healthy heart function because it converts homocysteine into benign molecules. And, and homocysteine is... I don't even know how to explain it. Um, homocysteine is a product that, um, oh, how, oh, I had it. I, I had, see, brain fog. Goy, goy, goy. I'm actually going to be a nerd and, and Google it because I don't want to leave you hanging. <laughs> homocysteine. there we go all right it's an amino acid which occurs in the body um to metabolize methionine and cysteine which tells me no more see this is all stuff i'm researching right now because i just heard about this being um I read an art, I read a couple of articles that mentioned it, it converting homocysteine into benign molecules and what that meant. Uh, it's an amino acid, vitamins B12, B6, and folate break down into homocysteine to create other chemicals that your body needs. High homocysteine levels may mean you have a vitamin deficiency. Without treatment, elevated homocysteine increases your risk for dementia, heart disease, and stroke. So that's what it means. <laughs> that's what it means when it's saying um, that it converts homocysteine into benign molecules. So it lowers your levels of um, that, which can contribute to like my personal fear factor is dementia. No, I don't want to go out that way. Uh, it improves your ear health, your gland health. It also has antibacterial properties, supports the control of diabetes, cancer, and rheumatoid arthritis. I, th I suspect a lot of that is due to the anti-inflammatory properties it has. Um, it is also an antioxidant. And um, so when I first saw the claim that it like improves ear health, I was like, how does it do that? <laughs> you know? So I did more research. And so essentially it acts, it clears inner ear fluid. So it kind of like, um, so it does 
amazing things with removing mucus from your body. Yeah, it heightens all of your senses. Yeah, it totally does. Because instead of your body trying to, it gets rid of the noise, right? It, it in so many ways. When I was, when I did the, the Mean Green, I felt so much more peaceful that it was just ridiculous. I, 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 I just, I hadn't felt that. It cleanses everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so parsley, um, reduces swollen and enlarged glands. It can eject watery poisons. So it's really good for, I mean, it's one of those things that in, in the apocalypse you want to have in your herb bag, you know what I'm saying? Because it can really seriously help somebody if they've ingested some kind of uh, water-based poison, <laughs> which you can get from bad water. Um, and excess mucoid matter, AKA <laughs> mucus, <laughs> uh, from the body, which is super important. So mucus and inflammation are, they go hand in hand in the body. If you find that you have excess mucus, like if your ears are always kind of draining or if you always have these sinus things going on, or if you always, <coughs> you know, always coughing something up, that means you have inflammation. And if you have inflammation, you will have excess mucus. It's, it's just a thing. And there are many, uh, doctors now, um, that are recognizing that truly inflammation is the key sign of disease because it is the body's very first defense mechanism. Um, it's why, like for instance, I have an allergy to shellfish, right? If I have any, I mean, if I even breathe in the cooking, I guess the oils that are released in the air from when it's cooking, um, my throat will start to, to swell up. And because of my allergy, that's my body's way of trying to protect me ironically, because <laughs> it's trying to restrict those particles from getting into my body. Um, when we have, like I had eczema for a while, I was telling Kasai about that today. Um, it just kind of naturally went away when I let go of some things. Um, it's a sign of, it, it's, a, it's an energetic disease as well as um, physical. But um, when you start doing cleanses, your body just has a chance to heal on its own and your body is constantly replenishing itself. The body that you have today is not the same body you had seven years ago. Every single cell in your body has replaced itself. Every single one. So we start talking about <clears throat> cell regeneration and cell division. And if you're eating healthy, if you're eating clean, your cells will divide in a clean way with clean gene breaks and or whatever. Um, <laughs> but if you are, yeah, yeah, it does a lot. Eliminating dairy does help with eczema. Um, oh my God. <laughs> I know that to be true. And yet I just, this is how the brain fog affects us or just, you know, not just thoughtlessness, right? You're not being mindful about what you're eating. Um, it's funny cause the other day I actually was, I had a rare moment when I craved milk. And so I just went in and I got my little organic milk and had a, a, a smallish glass. And let me show you something. That's where my eczema shows up. <laughs> um, interesting. Thank you, Kasai, for reminding me of my stupidity. Hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm at 44 minutes, 12 seconds, 13 seconds, 14 seconds, uh, now. So did you guys have any questions or, or do you think there's anything that I am leaving out? Oh, sorry, Brie. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, 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 Brie. Brie, 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 Brie. Sorry, Brie. Thank you, Brie, for reminding me of my stupidity. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, um, 
Yeah, I am super excited about this. I am super, super excited to do this cleanse because it has been 10 years since I've done a cleanse. And really should do one. Thank you, Kasai. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been 10 years since I've done uh, a cleanse and it's time for another one. So, um, yes, I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm going to do either a live or I'll upload a video um, on Saturday that shows me making the juice, drinking the juice, and kind of just going through what I'm going to go through. And I'll, um, I'll share my before pictures. That's never the fun part until after like when it's all over and you can go oh but look <laughs> this is what changed um so yeah i'm really excited for you guys to be what do i think about plant-based diet oh plant-based diet okay so i was talking about this with my kiddo because my 14 year old daughter is going to be doing this cleanse with me i'm going to be um pretty lenient on her about the amount of tea that she has to drink and stuff like that because she's she's a growing teenager and she doesn't need to have anything extreme that's another thing you can need to consider if um if you're if you're doing a cleanse um i think i never recommend cleanses for children no <laughs> it's just unless they're super mild like if you want to do green smoothies once a day with a kid do it do it um, but don't have them on anything restrictive or anything that's going to have a major elimination happening. Uh, just mainly because their little bodies, um, aren't prepared. They are growing. They need all the nutrients that they can get, which you're getting super dense nutrients doing these, but, um, but the cleansing process can be intense and you don't want that for your kids. Uh, Lily is at an age where, um, she can handle it. She's looking forward to it. Um, she has been feeling a little bit lethargic and stuff lately. Um, so as far as the plant-based diet, uh, I plan on doing some amazing things like uh, black bean burgers. I am thinking of doing some amazing chili. Nom, nom, nom. There's going to be all kinds of roasted vegetables on my plate. I am planning on, um, you know, it's... It's super simple. Anything that you can make with meat, you can make without meat. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. Um, I'm thinking I'll have Lily on kind of more of an 80-20. Like, I'll, I'll let her have some meat if she, if she feels like she needs it for extra protein or something. I am going to stay away from eggs and definitely staying away from dairy. Um, and I'll do that for her, too, because dairy is... It, it mucks up the system. It adds mucus because we're not supposed to be drinking milk or eating dairy after we are, you know, off our mama's tit. So, you know, our bodies are like, what are you doing? Um, do you guys have any thoughts on what kind of foods you're going to be uh, making for yourselves? Because I'm hoping to, it's the middle of winter, so it's not the super best um fruit selection out there, but there are some really good fruits, at least here in California. I don't know what it's like back east. <clears throat> Hemp milk is high in protein. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, and that's easy to get too. Uh, during this detail, it's recommended to stay away from dairy and eggs. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so this is a 30 day cleanse that we're going to be doing. It's going to be just three days using the juice, four days without each week. And we'll be drinking, um, 64 ounces of water and 32 ounces of dandelion root tea. And dandelion, by the way, is like nature's super fucking star. Okay. <laughs> um, you can use dandelion in so many different herbal medicines. Um, it's such an amazing, uh, plant ally. I call it an ally because it's so powerful. Um, it's 
so good for your liver. Um, it really, really helps to detox that liver. Um, it supports the liver too. So it's not just like, here, I'll help you squeeze the toxins out. It's like, here, let me love on you for a little while. <laughs> In fact, here's a little practice that we can do before I leave. So I came across this because I was doing so much research on like liver and detox and all this kind of stuff. I came across this page where this woman said to help support your liver, smile for your liver. And I was like, eh, squeeze me. <laughs> and it's just this cute little practice. And it's, it's so, so for me, it translates as, um, mindfulness and, um, and really, you know, cause your attention goes where your energy flows, where your attention goes kind of situation. Uh, Kasai says, I plan on doing quite a bit of smoothies, black bean burgers, sweet potatoes, rose, okra. Um, I love okra. Um, it's a Southern girl in me coming out and veggie soups. Uh, amen. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to incorporate smoothies as well. Right on. I might have to do that myself. Quite literally, I could live off of liquid things for the most part. <laughs> I, I really could. Um, oh yeah. So if you guys want to join me, um, the liver is so, so, so important and it works so hard. And if, and one of the things I've learned from being morbidly obese is you can get cirrhosis of the liver just because you're obese. Um, which that's not terrifying at all, right? You know, you're not doing anything but being fat, <laughs> as they say. Um, you know, you're not drinking excessively. You're not doing drugs. You're not, you know, doing all that. But that's how dangerous being morbidly obese is. You can um, really ruin a lot of your organs because you just make them work so much harder than they need to. Um, Bree says, we already eat plant-based, but I'm going to cut out vegan processed shit. Yeah. Yeah. There's healthy vegan. And then there's vegan <laughs> as they say, the, the vegan processed stuff that come stuff that comes in a box. Um, <clears throat> Cause I says, I love eating cactus and dandelion as well. So I will probably make salads with those that I have never eaten cactus before. I've eaten aloe. I'm kind of guessing it's sort of the same. Maybe. I don't know. So you're putting the actual flowers and roots in your salads. Explain. Tell me more. I'm running so late. I hope nobody minds, but we're having a good conversation. So. <laughs> And then I'll get back to the smile at your liver thing. Um, so while the delay is, oh, okay. And Brie says, should people drink half their body weight in ounces of water and the dandelion tea? So that's another point too. Um, one of the things that I was told was you really need to, to be fully hydrated. You need to drink as many ounces as you are pounds, which would be super stupid, impossible for me. Um, but I think, okay, I mean, uh, should people drink half their body weight in ounces in water and the dandelion tea, or should everyone drink 64 ounces plus dandelion tea? Um, when I did my cleanse before and the cleanse information that Kasai gave us, um, she was just saying 64 ounces of water plus the 32 ounces of dandelion tea a day. And that's every day. Uh, even when you're not doing the cilantro juice. Uh, yes, it's so good. Cactus puts you in the mind of pickles and yes, I'll put the dandelion flower and leaves in the salad. Right on. It's Micah. Oh my God. Munchen. How are you?
So everybody, Micah is one of my oldest friends, and I mean that lovingly. Um, he and I have been friends for over 20 years. Um, he's also a fabulous biologist slash nutritionist guy who knows a lot about this stuff. Um, so cause I said, so I start drinking the dandelion tea in the morning and the water throughout the day. Bree says, I feel like that's a lot for lower weight people. Micah is good. Thank you. You are welcome. Aw, Micah, I love you too. I love Kim. Hi, everyone. So, I was just ending, but you can always catch it on the replay, Micah. And if you do watch the replay, just do hashtag replay so that we have that record. Because I like to know. Um, so, very cool. Yeah, um, I'm... Where do you find the, do you just order like the dandelions from a herbal store? Kasai? Cause, um, blah, blah, blah. cause they're not like around a lot this time of year. I've had toss a coin to your witcher stuck in my head for like a few days and I'm going to thank my daughter for that. Toss your coin to your witcher. Oh, Valley of Plenty. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I will end now, um, but first I want to do the the liver smiling thing, and it's just really cute and sweet, and I think that our liver could use, true, yeah, we can get it in, in herb, herb stores, or even your co-op probably has it, now that I think about it. Um, okay, so if you want to join me, please feel free. I'm just going to give my liver a little bit of love. So... We love our liver because our liver supports us and keeps us from dying <laughs> from toxins that build up in our body. Uh, our liver is very stressed and our liver is always, always, always working for our greater good. And it doesn't always get the appreciation that it deserves. So if you would please put your hands on where your liver is. Um... And just feel your focus and your attention going to your liver. And just literally smile. <laughs> smile to your liver. Give it some love. Let it know that we're about to embark on a journey to support it. And to release it of a lot of excess bullshit. Help it to release energetically because it's been holding on to a lot of our toxins for a very long time because it didn't have anywhere else to put them and so it might be a little bit tentative uh, to release them so reassure them that we're now going to be giving them the nutritional support that it needs to release the toxins safely and remove it completely out of our bodies thank you thank you thank you liver for all the work that you do. Thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for working so hard. Now I'm going to give back to you. Starting Saturday when I start this cleanse. So prepare yourself to release and remove all those toxins that you've been holding on to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Aho. <sighs> Mountain Rose Herbs is amazing. I love them so much. I love them. Um, so that is going to be it for tonight. Thank you guys so much for turning up and turning out and being such wonderful conversationalists. I love it. Um, 64 ounces for lower weight people. Sorry, I just... I. I I read that, but it just kind of like blooped out of my mind. Um, thank you, Brie. 64 ounces. If we're talking about someone, uh, it depends on what you mean by lower weight. But if you're at least 120 pounds, it should be fine. It should be fine. And plus what we're doing is we're really kind of bombarding the body with water and the tea to help really flush it out. You're going to pee a lot. Yeah, your kidneys are going to be working. 
We should give a thank you to our kidneys, too. Thank you, kidneys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <sighs> Smiling to my kidneys. I love you, kidneys. Um, yeah, I mean, here's, here's my, like, overall coaching philosophy, right? Always listen to your body. Always listen to your body. Um, get in the practice of if you're not sure about something, put your hand over your heart. Just really connect into your, your solar plexus, your root chakra, your heart, your third eye, even your crown chakra if you want. And just ask a simple yes or no question. Like, should I be drinking 64 ounces of water and 32 ounces of of herbal tea is this safe for me and your body will vibrate one way or another and if you get a vibration that is anything but yes then it's a no because if you get kind of like a eh, i don't know check back later <laughs> you know if you get that kind of vibe that's a no but if you get yes then your body is prepared your body knows what's best um what's that practice called where um, is it Kinnis, Micah, do you know this one? Uh, Kinnis, Kinnis, the, you know, where you do the finger tests, like asking if something is correct. I don't remember what that is. I want to say it's like Kinnis, the, Kinnis, the, all, no, I can't think of the word. I will be able to after our cleanse. <laughs> uh, just wait a month and I'll get that word for you. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Um, if you drink the water and teeth another day, it will not be so bad. And it's important to drink them because it will help the liver and kidneys from being overworked with the amount of toxins that will be expelled from our bodies. If we don't see more, we can hurt our kidneys and liver. Excellent point, Kasai. Absolutely important. Not kinetics. Applied kinesiology. Is that the one where like... You, you tighten your fingers and then you put two fingers inside and you're like, um, am I, do I have enough melatonin in my brain or something? And then if you can break the fingers, then it's a no, but if you can't, then it's a yes kind of thing. Does that ring any bells? That sounds like it. I might have to look that up because someone did that on me once many years ago and said, I don't, I don't make my own melatonin. <laughs> um, it's probably because I was serotonin deficient at the time. Yeah, it's something. It's, it, I, I don't know. Anyway. So. All right. Did you have any questions, Mike? I know you only caught us at the end. Um, but I'm over an hour now, so I really should wrap it up. Um, yes. Thank you, liver and kidneys. We all make our own melatonin. I know, but it's based on serotonin. And I think at the time... I was depressed or something and I wasn't, I wasn't making my own serotonin very much, but anyway, that's, that was like all years ago, like way back in the nineties, back in the day. So, all right, my loves, my absolute lovelies. I adore all of you. Super, super, super happy that you guys showed up and, um, yeah, if you have any questions or additional comments, please put them in the comment section below. That includes, like, if you're watching it on the replay, Micah, or anything, or anybody. Um, there are different nutrients to help the body support detox in phase one and two detox. Phase three detox is the microbiome. See, I'm going to have to do, like, a, I'm going to have to have you on our podcast, Micah. You're going to have to do all the science stuff for us because I don't know the science stuff. You know the science stuff. But I love you. And I love you. It's not a but. Mwah. Awesome. Thank you, you guys. You guys are also awesome. You're amazing. And I hope you have an, um, a glorious rest of your evening. And... Yay. <laughs> XOXOXOXO. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you again for coming and I love you. Bye.